Welcome to Fantasy Victory Now. And, Paul, there were some lackluster week one performances, but yeah. a lot of guys that are probably going to bounce back some of the usual suspects in week two. Yeah, so let's uh, talk about some guys that maybe you can buy low on with skittish fantasy owners. You know, fantasy owners, it's what have you done for me last week? And if it wasn't last week, and especially in week one, then it's never going to happen, right? So there's a lot of guys who were players that we liked going into the draft that didn't perform well in week one that you could go target via trade and maybe even a couple of cases free agency. So let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about those guys. Yeah, starting with a rookie with some high expectations, Bishop Sankey in Tennessee. Yeah, first player taken in the draft uh, among running backs and got almost no work in the first, in the first week of, uh, of the NFL season. And, you know, the good thing is he only has to beat out Sean Green. Somebody always beats out Sean Green. <laughs> That's not that hard to do. Easy, easy matchup this week as well. So as he gets to play against Dallas. So there's an opportunity you can even you know, trade for and then start Bishop Sankey this week as a deep sleeper. And the Packers had that really tough week one matchup on yes. a Thursday night against Seattle. Jarrett Boykin, he's not the top option in that offense, no. but he's a guy that should get a lot of points as he get into the year. Yeah, what you need to know about Jarrett Boykin is this. He acted as the sacrificial lamb on Richard Sherman's side of the field. So you got to tie up. Richard Sherman always plays the left side, the defense's left, left side of the field. They, they just threw Jarrett Boykin on the right side of the field to, to keep him on, you know, basically – to, again, be the sacrificial lamb. I mean, they didn't do anything over there. They literally never threw to Jarrett Boykin once. <laughs> so there's a lot of Jarrett Boykin owners. You took him late in the draft. They got a little bit panicky. And here's an opportunity to have a guy who traditionally the third receiver in, in an Andrew uh, Aaron Rodgers offense is good for eight touchdowns, 900 yards. So, you know, let's go take a look at Jarrett Boykin, see if you can get him on the cheap. And one of your guys that was kind of a preseason sleeper, looking to kind of have a breakout year now that he's the lead back in Jacksonville was Toby Gerhardt. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know if I want to call him a sleeper because I don't think I liked him any more or less than anybody else did, but you know, Gerhardt's a guy that remains a workhorse for Jacksonville. It's going to be an inconsistent Jacksonville offense, and he didn't look great in week one, but he also was going against a very good run defense. Tougher matchup this week as well for him, but Gerhardt's a guy that you could target as just a workhorse guy that you know is going to have the ball in his hands a lot every week. Demarius Thomas, he's going to be one of those guys that's going to be one, two, three in the weekly rankings, almost week in, week out. But yeah. just kind of laid an egg. It wasn't his day in week one. It wasn't. It was Julius Thomas's turn. And it wasn't Demarius Thomas's turn. But that'll change. You know, every week it's going to be somebody different. And But Demarius Thomas is still the best wide receiver option in a Peyton Manning-led offense. And that counts for a ton. So I still think Demarius is a top three wide receiver. And he may be available a little cheaper now than he would have been at the start of the season. The guy that had a breakout rookie year, but not exactly a breakout start to 2014, yeah. Keenan Allen down in San Diego. Yeah, and now Keenan Allen, maybe you really want to sleep on this one for one more week cause, because Keenan Allen's going to draw the Seahawks this week. He got a lot of Patrick Peterson last week. So Keenan Allen's a guy that, you know, a lot of upside. He's the go-to receiver on San Diego's entire team, you know, including even, you know, tight ends with, you know, Gates or running backs with Woodhead. Keenan Allen's still the go-to guy. Uh, again, tough matchup this week. You could use that to your advantage if you were to try to trade for him. Tell, you know, tell the Keenan Allen owner, look, you don't even want to start Keenan Allen this week because he's going to go up against Seattle. So this is your chance right now to go ahead and grab him, this, you know, grab him now at a cheap price. There you go. And then talking about guys that had those bad week ones, yeah. you're looking to kind of repair, fix your lineup, maybe work some trades. Yeah. These are a few guys to target and buy low heading into week two. Well, there's uh, and one last guy that we should probably mention. Des Bryant um, got knocked out of the game last week. Um, you know, he dehydrated. I yeah. dehydrate yourself out of a game, but he dehydrated himself out of a game. And so, you know, you know, the Cowboys offense never really got in sync, and you know, presumably that'll end up changing. So, Des Bryant might be. A, a, he's an awfully good player. We know that. And so, my thinking here is that maybe Des Bryant's got a little something, plenty left, and. And although another guy with a tough matchup this week, Tennessee's a really good secondary. Yeah, Tennessee, so they tough. don't have Werner anymore, but they still have great defense. They still, yeah, they still have a very good pass defense. Yeah. So, you know, Des Bryant's still a guy that you might be able to get somebody to, to be suddenly feel a little squeamish on. You could go target. Yeah. There you go, Dr. Charch, patching up your lineup with a good fresh Band-Aid. Those are some guys to buy low on and hopefully have some better luck in week two.